I believe that tonight what the Lord's given us to eat tonight is a standalone message, all right? Just a standalone message. Uh, it came to me this morning as I was meditating and praying in the Spirit. Um, and, and just, I believe that God just downloaded a, just, man, a whole, a massive amount of just wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And then, of course, when I went into the Word, boom, He took me right to what He was telling me this morning. And I'm like, whoa, come on, Holy Ghost, Right? That's the best way to live, to be honest with you guys. I mean, I know it's not the, it's that, it's, that's not the most popular thing to talk about nowadays, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit and all that. I get it. But that, that's when probably God speaks to you is in that time when it's not popular. He'll speak to you about things that are important to him. And how many of you know that his spirit is important to him? Come on. Amen. And his spirit is the only one who has the mind of Christ that is able to allow us to have the mind of Christ. Come on. Uh, Sister Paula was praying, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And that's true in Isaiah. That's what he said. But he wants our thoughts to be his thoughts. And he wants his ways to be our ways. Come on. Amen. He wants us. He doesn't want us to bring him down to our level. He wants to bring us up to his. Come on. Amen. He wants to break us out of the mentality of just earthly minded. He wants to break us out of that. See, we're so used to being earthly minded that we think that that's commonwealth. That's the commonplace. But it really isn't. It really isn't. He says, put your mind on things that are above, not on things that are below. Come on. Amen. Come on, somebody. So he wants to break us out of the shell that we were so used to being in and tap us right into the heavenly sphere, the heavenly realm, so that we can be the demonstration of heaven on earth. Come on. Come on. Tonight, listen, I'm going to do a little shouting tonight, all right? If that's okay, I'm going to do a little preaching to you guys tonight, if, if that's all right, if that's okay. So if I get yelly and screamy and you feel like you want to jump out of your uh, pew or seat and, and roll, go for it. Roll, holy rollers, go for it. Do it. You feel like running around the church, praise God. Go ahead. Just do it. Just for tonight. Don't do it Sunday morning when all the newcomers. Just tonight because Wednesday nights normally are for the, for the more seasoned people. Yeah, they, they're the ones that really love God. <laughs> okay. Don't tell Sunday morning that. Okay. Praise the Lord. All right. So, but so tonight, Raj, I, I do. I want to put you into this spot tonight that you guys got to really, truly understand. All right. Because the devil is not going to be beating us up anymore or trying to. He's not. So tonight's message is entitled this, What Do You Have? But that's the short version of the title. What Do You Have? That's the short, the short title because I didn't want Sister Miranda putting the whole title up there because it would have took up the whole screen and another screen would have been to, to, to be continued. But here's really what I wanted to call it. What do you have that the devil wants? What do you have that the devil wants? If you know anything, and you really don't need to know too much about him, but if you know anything about the devil, he got stripped of every single thing that God had given him. Everything. When, when Jesus said, I seen him fall like lightning, boom, he fell down and he fell. Listen, he was deprived. He became Satan, the adversary, the enemy to God and God's people. And you got to understand something? He, it, he can't love you. He can't. He can't bless you because those are attributes and characteristics of who? God, okay? He can't love you. He can't bless you. He can't take care of you. All he's going to do is steal, right? All he's going to do is what? Kill and what else? Destroy. But see, what, what is he trying to steal, kill, and destroy? What is it that you have that he wants? Because can I tell you this, Sister Polly? The, see, he is the prince of the power of the air. But the only way he can have godly power is through godly people. Are you with me? I told you I'm going to do some screaming tonight, Sister Kim. All right? Because I'm, this is almost found, foundational tonight. Almost foundational. I could preach this thing without even looking at my notes. But here's the deal. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 11 and verse 3. It says this. We don't have it up on the board, right? This is extra. I'm just going to talk to you. Is that the Bible says that if the foundations be shaken, what can the righteous, someone say I'm righteous. What can the righteous do? That's another question that God's asking. And you know what the answer is? What's the answer? Nothing. If our foundation be broken, another scripture says. 
See, when Jesus laid down the foundation, he knew that Satan was going to be hanging around. He knew that. Why? Because he threw him down to where? He didn't leave him in heaven. He threw him down to this earth. And where are we living at? On planet what? Earth. Come on, somebody. Right? So guess who's going to be down here with us too? Is the, the devil. Well, he knew that. That means that when he lays down the foundation in your life, that foundation cannot and will not be shaken or broken. Come on, somebody. I need somebody in this room that can just listen to me, just hear me. Don't be so busy trying to write notes. I get it. It sounds good. But if you write notes, share them on uh, Facebook. If just, but anyway, so, all right, so anyhow, so, so, here's, so the deal is this, guys, is that you do have something. You do that the devil wants because he can't get it any other way. He can't get it any other way. He wants to have that godly power again, but he can't. Only through godly people. If he has power in your life, it's because we yielded it to him. Come on, I'm not looking at anybody. I'm just saying, y'all guys got to get this. Y'all guys got to understand this, okay? If he has power over your life, he didn't get it from anybody else, but come on, right? He got it from you. He got it from me. And if he's right here, and I said this Sunday morning, I've said it before, if he's right here talking into your ear, he has no business there. Because Jesus said, the voice of a stranger, you will not hear. You will not listen to. You are deaf to that voice. Come on. Okay? You are deaf to that voice. Why? Because he should be under your feet. Facebook Live, you hear me? He should be under your feet. He has no business next to your ear. You should not even be hearing his voice. I told you I got Sunday. The only sound the devil should be making is this. Right? Because he's under your feet. Come on, brother Daniel. You know what I'm saying? Right? Okay. So let me just tell it like how it's supposed to be, man. If he has power over your life, it's because... I know people don't like, they like to put blame on everybody else oh, because of them, it's because of them. No, it's because you, you let them, you let him. So as of tonight, I'm going to tell you what he's after after you. Why? What do you have that he wants? What is so important that you have that he's after you? Why? What does he not want you to have on this earth that he wants? You got to think about that because honestly, Jesus said he paid a high price for you. You ought to be so expensive to the devil. Because you were so expensive to God that he had to send his only begotten son to be crucified on the cross and shed his precious, blameless, clean blood that not only took care of our sins for one year, but took care of it for eternity. Whew. Next time you take communion, you ought to remember that about the blood of Jesus. You ought to remember that about his body. It's not just a little piece of bread. It's not just a little cup of juice. It is his entire body crucified on that cross, shed, the blood shed. Come on. I got to get in your face tonight because the devil's been in your face, and it's time, it's time to get rid of that sorry sucker and stop listening to what he's saying. In 2020, during the pandemic, he spoke to a lot of people, and a lot of people listened to him. Why? Because the church tried to shut down, and they couldn't get people to stop coming to church. People stopped reading the word. People stopped praying in the spirit. People started getting fearful. People, okay, so what happened now is a lifestyle switched. And people weren't really dependent on God. They were dependent on the church structure. But when we open back up, when we open church back up again, and then here earlier this year in, in July the 4th, God said they need the Holy Spirit. That's what it is that people need. They need the power of God to get back into their lives. That's why he talked about coming back to our first love. That is the fire of the Holy Spirit. That is, he is the one who saved you. You believed, and the Holy Spirit came inside you. Boom. And you became born again. Right? Come on. Amen. Praise God. All right. So what do you have? All right. So here it is. Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 23. 
All right, Ephesians chapter 1, 17 to 23. Now, our team in the back, they're going to bring you up the Amplified, all right? And I'm going to read, I'm going to be going back and forth. I'm going to start with the King James, but we'll be reading back and forth to the Amplified. So you guys stay with the Amplified. I'll, I'll, I'll read out the King James, and we'll just keep cr- cr- crisscross, all right? Crisscross will make you jump, jump. Okay, so we're going to crisscross. All right, here we go. All right, it says this. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory... And this is Paul talking to the church of Ephesus. This is Paul talking to us tonight. This is God talking to us. All right, here we go. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It says in the Amplified, it says, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Watch this, of insight into mysteries and secrets. In the deep and intimate knowledge of God. Now, let me tell you something. One of the things that you have is wisdom and revelation. You have the Holy Spirit, uh, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation on the inside of you. That if you would dig hard enough, that if you would dig long enough, that if you would just discover that there is purpose on the inside of you, that is Holy Spirit led, you would discover that there is wisdom and secrets come on somebody and mysteries uh, and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of God that is not just about saying I I believe in God that's fine to start there but there's deeperness there's a little bit more there's more to it than that Come on, Jesus. Paul didn't just say this so he could sound all good and we could be talking about him today to say, wow, isn't that so beautiful that Paul said all that? No, when he prayed this right here, he was praying that we, the body of Christ, would receive this. And I think more, this was spoken way over 2,021 years ago, and I'm pretty sure that by now somebody ought to have got a hold of this. Come on. I don't know if you've ever thought back into your into your lineage, you know, into your uh, forefathers in, in, you know, in your family. Have you ever thought that maybe somebody back in your family, maybe a thousand years ago was a preacher? Or they were believers? You know, for all I know, I'm the first one in my family to get saved. But when I was talking to my mom one time, she said, Mijo, you had, you had some grandparents that were actually, you had some great, great, great parent, grandparents that were actually preachers. I said, what? Wow. And it's almost like when I started, when, when she told me that, I thought to myself, you know what? That makes sense. Why, when I got saved, boom, I got on fire for God like that. Because there was something that was already built There was a foundation that was already poured. Come on, somebody. There was somebody done worked something in my past somewhere along the line that it ran right down into my blood. Come on. Somebody was working it. Somebody was plowing. Somebody was digging. Somebody had the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit deep in their heart, deep in their soul, that praise God, that just flowed on down to me. I mean, it makes sense to me why I just caught fire like that. You know, some other people say, man, it's taking a little while for me to, you know, catch that. I mean, immediately, Sister Crystal, when I got saved, immediately, I I got hungry for the word. Y'all guys know the story? I wanted to eat the Bible. But see, what happened was, it was just a continuation of what was worked back then. That's why some of you in here, you got saved, and boom, you connected to the Lord. Because probably somebody in your past, I don't know how far back, however far it may be, somebody in your past worked and plowed the field somewhere. They put the hand to the plow and never looked back. Come on. They were worthy to be called his disciples. I'm I'm preaching, and now I'm telling you guys. And, and, And so it makes sense. It makes sense to me. Well, here Paul's telling us, how many years back was he saying this? He was saying back then, look, man, that God would grant you a spirit of wisdom. That's what the devil's after. That's what you have. He wants that wisdom. He's stupid. Can I just tell you that? And the Lord rebuke him. I got that. But he wants wisdom. 
And if he gets wisdom somehow in your life, it's because he stole. And if he can steal it, he can kill. And if he can kill it, he can destroy you with your very own gift that God put inside you. The very own wisdom and the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation that God put on the inside of you. He'll use it against you. That's what he wants. You think you're just a little bitty old nothing here, a Mexican from Snyder or, or a Caucasian from Snyder or, a, or a, 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 a black person from Snyder and you're just in this little bitty town, you know, uh, trying to make things happen. And if it happens, it doesn't. But no, listen to me, family. You have, you have, you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation on the inside of you. Bam, come on, man. Praise God. Did y'all get that? Can y'all say amen to that? Come on, can you believe that? Because let, let me tell you something. You, you can't, they, all this that this Bible has to offer you is unbelievable. Why? Because your natural mind won't allow you to receive it. Because this is a supernatural book. How many people have you seen walk on water? How many people have you seen turn water into wine? Come on. Some of y'all are like, ooh, that'd be pretty cool. But no. <laughs> Are y'all with me? All right, let's keep on going. Verse 18 says this, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Uh, Amplify says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand Jesus. The hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance where in the saints? Is that the Los Angeles saints? No, it ain't the Los Angeles saints. It is you, the Snyder, Texas saints. Come on, the family faith center Snyder saints. Come on, somebody. That's you. It's talking about you. That how rich is his glorious inheritance in you? Come on, praise God. Listen, 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 listen. There is no light in darkness. There is no light in the devil. He can't see. He can't see what you see. Because here Paul saying that your heart will be flooded with light. See, our heart should not be flooded with darkness. If it is, it's because we gave the light to somebody that shouldn't have been having it. That's what you have. You have this. And you, listen, your mind and your heart has to switch to believe this word. You, this is the only thing right here that you can put, you can bank on. This right here. I mean, people are going to tell you, man, you ain't got no wisdom, man. Mira, that's todo tonto. You ain't got no revelation, bro. You don't even know what a li- how to switch a light bulb out. Like, they're going to tell you all this mess. Well, what do you mean you got light in your heart, bro? You're evil. No. I can't. Hear the voice of a stranger. And then you're like, well, that's my cousin. Well, the way he's talking, sound like a stranger. Because he may not be a saint. Y'all with me? This is what you got. This is what you have. And you got to speak this out about yourself. You look at yourself in the mirror. Father, I thank you that you have given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and that you have given me the eyes, that the eyes of my heart is flooded with light so that no darkness can fill that place. Come on, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise God. So this is, this is what you have that he wants. He can only be as smart as the power you give him to be. Because, watch this, Jesus healed a person with a deaf and dumb spirit. Okay, where do you think that deaf and dumb spirit came from? From who? Okay, if Jesus came and healed him, why would Jesus give him something that he's going to heal him from? No, no, a deaf and dumb spirit came from a deaf and dumb devil. Come on, come on, amen. All right, he can't hear. And he can't, he don't know what the heck's going on. Y'all getting this? This is what you got. 
So stop looking at yourself. I'm going to say this. Stop looking at yourself as some pity party, victim mentality, poverty-filled type of person who now is in Christ, who you have, who you are his glorious inheritance. That's what God thinks of you. His thoughts are not your thoughts, right? As long as you don't got this word, you will not. But his thoughts are this right here. This is his thoughts right here. This is his ways right here. Come on, praise God. This is it. There is something to you. You were created in God's image and in God's likeness. Come on, that's the foundational scripture right there. Man, I was made in his image and his likeness. That means I got something like God well, right here. It's telling you what you got. Come on. If I wake up sore tomorrow, I'll be okay. My throat. Shut up. Come on, man. Verse 19. Watch this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? Do I got any believers in this house? Come on, do I have any believers? Boy, you ought to be shouting. Come on. Because, if you know, the saints really, the, if the Cowboys made a touchdown, y'all got to be yelling. Do we have any believers in this house? Yeah. Come on, do you, okay, do you believe this word? Do you believe what just been spoken over you? Do you truly believe it? Now stop listening to the lies that are opposing this. Watch this. Towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Now that in the Amplified says, and so that you can know and understand. Someone say, I can understand. What is the immeasurable? Someone say immeasurable. <clears throat> and unlimited. Ooh, someone say unlimited. Come on, say it. Say it. And surpassing. If that ain't enough. Greatness. Of his power, where? Where? Where's his power at? Where? Where, 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 where? That you can understand his power, where? In and for us who believe. My gosh. Posoy, yo creo, yo no sé, chanza, ojala. Okay, those are terms. This is Spanish, sister. Can I was just saying, hopefully, uh, I, I wish, I hope. I don't know, maybe. Okay, wait. Okay, okay, all those words that I just used right there, those are all natural-minded mentality words. Okay? You got to shift it, family. You got to shift it to the point where you're saying, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Your word says that I can know and I can understand. Come on. What is the immeasurable? Ooh, immeasurable? Like, yeah, you, are you going to try to measure this? Okay, boss, it only goes 30 feet. What are we going to do now? You can't, bring, you can't bring a tape measure to God. He'll break it. Lo quebra todo. Starts doing all that inside. You know, it's got like a little retractor thing inside. It'll, it'll, it'll bust it. That means we ought to be able to dig so deep that we can know and understand his immeasurable greatness, his unlimited greatness, his surpassing greatness. Of his power, the Holy Spirit, in and for us who believe. Come on. My gosh. That sickness cannot overtake you. That is limited. That relationship that ain't working is limited. That job is limited. We can't depend on that thing or that paycheck. It's limited. There's a time stamp on it. That business may not, hopefully it does in Jesus' name, but it may not last forever. Sears and Roebuck, remember Sears and Roebuck? Somebody used to buy your pants there. Montgomery Ward, what happened to it? Bells, what happened to it? Some of y'all are like, mm, I miss Bells. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, what happened to it, right? It eventually, because it's what? Limited. But God isn't. And he is unlimited. That means he can take you from age zero to age 120. Because we got the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation on the inside of us. And this is only, only given to them who believe. 
So don't get yourself out of that realm, out of that domain of being a believer and not just by title, but by action on the inside of you. You are a believer. And if you believe, boom, these things will hit. Come on. You got to believe. It's supernatural. You got to go beyond what they show you here. Well, man, I, you know, that's, oh, no, well, let's do better. Well, I can only do so much. I remember one time, uh, Sister Kim, I, I approached uh, Pastor Sam, and I, I got in some trouble for something that somebody else did, but I didn't put the blame on him. I went and took the, I took the hit. And here's what I said. All I could say was, you know what, Pastor, I did, I did my best. And don't take nothing away from Pastor Sam. This, he's, just, he's just like that. I mean, he's, he's a great, amazing, credible I honor him. And he said to me, he said, well, your best is not good enough. I said, he said, do better. I said, yes, sir. Boom. What was he doing? He was pushing the potential that's on the inside of me. See, it's not just Bert living this earth. It's not just me and my abilities and my strength living this earth. It is the ability of the Holy Spirit that can push us beyond whatever it is that we think we can't do. And I learned that. He pushed me to do that. Not to depend on my strength, because in my strength, well, that's all I can do. Right? And I start crying. <laughs> but no, he said, no, you're, you're, you're your best is not good enough, go do better. And I did. Because that was bringing out the un immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness that is in and for me. Because I believe. Are y'all with me tonight? So again, let me tell you something. Get out of the pity party, victimized mentality that you're a victim all the time because, oh, and you start feeling sorry for yourself. And then you start getting around other people that pat you on the back and start treating you like a little baby. Like they want to babysit that little, that little victimized mentality that you have. Why? Because probably they have the same thing. And they can't get out of that. But Jesus said you're more than a conqueror. Come on, you're an overcomer. Amen. So that's what you got to focus on. Well, I got stuff going on in my body. You don't understand, Pastor. Well, I'm not the one telling you this. The word is God's telling you this is what you have on the inside of you. Believe that and stop believing all this other mess that's going on over here that really is trying to take the focus off of the truth. See, I'm still yelling, but it's not in a loud voice. I'm yelling in a little softer voice. I'm just trying to get something across to you guys so that you can get this because this is the way, this is the way things get done. And don't be afraid. Listen, man, you can't be blaming everybody else for the lifestyle that you're living. Well, it was because of my dad back when I was younger. I get you. I understand that that was something that happened back then. But you know what? You're, you're in a new family now. You got a new bloodline now. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You, you got cleansed. You got adopted into a new family, the family of faith. Come on. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> All right. As demonstrated, watch this, in, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. Let's go on to the next scripture. Uh, <clears throat> wait, I'm over here in the word. It says. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So you notice all these things that are going on. When did it happen? It's right there. It's an open book test, guys. What? When did it happen? He exerted this, and amplified, he exerted this in Christ when he raised Jesus from the dead. And watch this. And seated him. At his own, oh, at his own right hand in the heavenly places. See, how long ago was Jesus raised from the dead? Do, do you guys know? At least 20, 2021 years ago, at least, right? Right? Because we're in, we're in AD now. After death, right? After Jesus died, okay? So notice that all this that Paul's talking about was exerted. When you and I received Jesus, 
as our personal Lord and Savior. The moment you got saved, a new power showed up in your life. A power that is able to keep the devil under your feet at all times. Because he's after what you have. He would wish he could have something like this, but he doesn't. And the only place he can get it is in you. Wow, man. Come on. Somebody say, I have it. How many of y'all believe in this house? How many believers? Come on. How many are in Christ? Okay. You know what's cool about this idea of being in Christ? Is that it says that when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, you went with him. You're right there too. Did you know that? Did you get that revelation right there? You got wisdom revelation. Come on. Did you pick that up? Listen, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Wendy, you're not just sitting right here. You're not just sitting in this pew right now, okay? There's two of you going on here. There's you here on this earth sitting right there in, the, in that chair, and then there's, there's the other you seated in the right hand of the Father in Christ in the heavenly places. So that means to tell me that whatever it is that's jarring you or that's trying to shake your foundation down here on this earth, you got to go to the place where it's not shaken. You got to go to the you that's not shaken, that's not a, a, a victim, that's not being ran over. And you got to get that mindset and bring it back to heaven. I mean, sorry, bring it back to earth. Because, see, Christ is not just him. He said it's you, too. You are in Christ, seated at his God's right hand. Amen. So, yeah, okay, well, it's me down here on this earth, man. Crystal Salazar, I'm down here. I'm trying to figure life out. Okay, then break through that. Break through that mentality and get to your heavenly mind. And, stop, and start pouring from heaven down to this earth. Come on. I, I told you he poured a whole lot into me this morning. All right, guys? He poured a whole lot into me. I'm just pouring that out into you guys. Hopefully, y'all guys get oily and all sticky and all like gooey and like, man, I got this. Because can I tell you this? Things are going to get tougher in the future. They're not going to get easier. Okay? And it's not going to get any lighter either. It's only going to get darker. Get that. And it's going to get crazier. It's going to get way crazy. This is nothing right here. Because Jesus said that when you see it getting that crazy, just know it ain't the end yet. It's only the beginning. Ooh, we have, we have, we're, we're seeing a little bit of stuff, but yeah, we ain't seeing it how it's going to get. The future generations that, we, that are living after us, they're going to see it. So guess what our job is to do? Our job is to do what my great, 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 great grandfather did for me. We got to continue to keep laying on that foundation because my future children depend on it. My future generations depend on what I do now. And if you want to continue to have your children, your children's children, your children's children, and future generations be in that curse, then keep living that life of earthliness. Keep sowing that seed because that's what exactly what's going to happen. But if you want your children's children and future generations to be super blessed and super abundant and living a life that's like this, then you got to keep, you got to put your hands to the plow and work it. And don't look back. You got to keep moving forward and break the ground. So that your future generation family can have a foundation that's not easily shaken and easily broken. Because they're the righteous and they got some things to do and to get done. Listen, we weren't born in the future future. I mean, yeah, we're born right now. We're seeing some crazy things. But we, we haven't, what our future generation family is going to see, it's going to be super duper crazy. Way out there crazy. What we, what we thought. And can I just tell you this? I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with the scriptures, all right? We're done. I'll continue. I thought it was going to be a standalone message, but I got like 56 scriptures. Anyway, so I may continue it next Wednesday, right? Is that cool? Okay, I'm going to keep yelling at you next Wednesday? I'm not really yelling at you because I'm mad at you. I'm yelling at you because you got to understand what you got. And stop letting the devil do what he's doing. God didn't give the power to him. That's why he got mad. 
He thought he was going to get the power. Until he heard he's going to give it to mankind, God's creation. And he said, what the? Did y'all hear that? I'm the one supposed to be next in line to get this. Come on. Two-thirds of the angels, vente. We're going to go, we're going to go see what's really going on. And bajo. Failure is only a mindset that's not heavenly. I mean, even if I do things wrong here, I don't, I don't, I don't, that, that's not who I am. The, well, I did my best. Well, your best is not good enough. That means I got to get better. Because God's best lives on the inside of you. And God's best is immeasurable. Come on. It's unlimited. And it's surpassing greatness. And it's the power that is at work. Where? In and for us as believers. I'm telling you guys, you, there's more for you than there is against you. You think all these little people right here talking mess about you, saying stuff on Facebook about you. Those people are the, they are the minority. The majority is you got all this going for you. You got the angels in heaven going for you. You got God himself going for you. You got Jesus himself going for you. You got the Holy Spirit going for you. He's for you. They're for you. There's more for you than there is against you. So just because you get in a situation where it's a little difficult, well, then watch this. Tap into the, uh, tap into the mysteries. Tap into the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And find out how to get past all this because your best May not be good enough, but his best will take you way over. And then you'll get to the point like, wow, I didn't think I could. I could how? But see, the truth will prevail. That's why God says, man, that heaven and earth will burn and uh, the flowers and the grass may wither and fade away. But the word of God, that truth that we believe, that truth that we believe will never die never die why because that truth right there watch this let me just say this and I'm in here because that truth right there is the same yesterday watch this it's the same today oh, oh yeah and it's also in your future did you know that that word is so way ahead of its time and we think that oh why am I going to believe something that an old man with a beard back in the day said no 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 man that word is yeah it's in the past it's in the present but it's way in the future. This word is already in the new heaven, in the new earth. <laughs> Come on, get that. You want to get ahead of the game? Get in this word right here and believe that truth because it was set there for you so that you can believe that and not believe the voice of a stranger. Because God said, I put all things under your feet. Come on, you ought to wake up in the morning. Don't wake up all soft and slowly. Wake up in the morning like, that's what I did this morning. Satan, you're under my feet. You ain't got no thoughts on my, on my mind. You ain't got no heart in my heart. None. I've got a job to do. I got kingdom business to run here. Y'all with me tonight? Did y'all get that? I'll, I'll continue this next Wednesday then, all right? There'll be a part two. Because I got a whole lot of scriptures going on there, big time. I got three different translations I was going to preach out of. King James, Amplified, and the New Living. However which way it happens, it doesn't matter. All I know is if you guys will get this on the inside of you, you'll see your foundations will be so strong. <sighs> Satan can show up with a jackhammer and I, and I mess it up. you would be like, quítate, quítate, quítate. <laughs> <laughs> Just flick him off like a flea, man. Now, for those that say, well, man, you don't know you should be talking about the devil. It's because you're making the devil that big. That's all, that's all it is. You're just making him that big. It's like you're trying to make him bigger than God. But ain't nothing bigger than God. Ain't nothing stronger than God. Ain't nothing wiser than God. Even all the wisdom we have that comes from the spirit of wisdom and revelation, still nothing. Bible says that too. Even 
the, the, what is it? Even the, I'm just going to put it in my, in my terms. It's, even the, the dumbest in God's wisdom is way smarter than ours. <laughs> I know that's not the right way to put it, but it was a paraphrase. But do you get this? It's on the inside of you. No, man, forget that, man, and stop playing into it. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, stop playing into it. All, all it is is just the powers of lies being told to you by the devil, and you're believing it because you're seeing it over and over and over and over and over again where it becomes, like I said earlier, commonplace. But if you would just keep your eyes seeing on this truth over and over and over and over and over, you'll see that this word becomes commonplace and that you'll be healed. You'll overcome. You'll break through every single time. Well, you know, the, the troubles and the tribulations and all that, they're going to keep coming. Jesus said that. But so do the victories. So do the overcomings. People like to, they used to, there was a big hashtag back then, you know, struggle is real. And some people like to still use that. But I, 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 I wouldn't agree with that. I would say, no, the victory is real. The struggle is temporary. But the victory is eternal. Because the, the word says in 1 Corinthians says that thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. I choose to believe that word. Come on. Amen. Come on. That's what I'm telling you guys. You guys are believers. You got to believe that word. That's what makes you a believer. Not that you believe in God. That you believe in his word. That you believe what he's already told you. This is what you got on the inside of you. But como? I don't have that yet. Oh, I wish I could have that. No, no. You do have it. That's why the devil is trying to steal it. He's trying to kill it. He's trying to destroy it. So that you can't live up to the way God wants you to live. Amen. Come on. We're still trying to kill the weeds, uh, trying to chop the weeds off when we should be pulling them up from the roots. So next time weeds show up, don't smoke it. Just make sure to, you know, pull it up from the roots. Come on, somebody. Amen. Did y'all guys get that tonight? Amen. amen. Come on. Someone say amen in the house.